Thank you, Presiding Officer. For my generation, the conception and realisation of this institution, our Scottish Parliament, heralded the beginning of a more positive era for our country and an exciting new chapter in our nation's story. And so I feel both honoured and inspired to speak for the first time in this magnificent chamber and to succeed an exemplary public servant like Malcolm Chisholm. And I'm sure I speak for all of us here when I wish Malcolm all the very best in his retirement and thank him sincerely for all that he did as an MSP and for the benefit of other people. Presiding officer, as well as feeling grateful and privileged to be here, I also feel determined, determined to deliver for my constituency and for the people of Edinburgh, Northern and Leith, and determined to speak up for the common cause of the common good. Like many people in our country, I believe in social justice, and I believe in it as an ambition to be achieved, not just as an aspiration. And that's why the Scottish Government's bold priorities matter to us all. From measures to close the attainment gap in education to record investment in our health service. From plans to build 50,000 more affordable homes to using new tax and welfare powers progressively and responsibly. The Scottish Government's priorities will benefit the whole of Scotland. Presiding officer, with reform, leadership and initiative, we can build a fairer society and also a stronger, more equal economy. A Scotland where we remember that sharing the rewards rewards us all and that success is succeeding together. We can build a country where we get past the misleading divide between the public and the private sectors and instead remember that with collaboration, innovation and creativity, we can live in a nation that's not only more productive and competitive, but also more just. And that's why we should embrace the Scottish Government's commitment not only to invest in our country's physical infrastructure, but also to increase childcare provision. We should endorse the Government's determination not only to enhance support for small businesses and support public services, but also to promote fair work. Presiding Officer, I welcome the Scottish Government's priorities and their determination to use all of the powers of this Parliament to make a positive and lasting difference. But, presiding officer, let me also be clear about something else. While I certainly welcome using all the current and new powers of this parliament, at every appropriate opportunity, I will also passionately and purposefully state the truth on the constitution as I and many others see it. The truth that more powers and ultimately full powers for Scotland are the keys we need to achieve the greater end of social justice and to enhance economic progress. They are the, the tools we require to shape our future and they are the passport to an equal voice in the modern world. In saying that, however, and this is important, I've always believed that the differing views on independence that we have in our country and in this chamber mustn't distract us from the unifying hope of a better Scotland. As MSPs and as a society, there is so much that binds us and we should build on that consensus. From addressing inexcusable man-made poverty in our communities to tackling the global threat of climate change. From measures to confront the social economic difficulties of our time to realising more of our country's human potential. Let us focus over the next five years on the hopes we share and harness that collective aspiration to deliver for those that sent us to this place. What we do in this remarkable building, in this important chapter for modern Scotland, will have impact and meaning throughout our country, and every word and action will make a difference. So in that spirit, let us take our democracy forward, as well as our country. With so many new MSPs and so much new energy, let's consistently demonstrate the good work of this institution and the goodwill of our nation in the proceedings of this chamber. Let us move beyond the tribalism, the exaggerated language, the unnecessary amplification of conflict. Let's move beyond the bad habits of the past that put so many people off politics. In the months and years ahead, 
Let us always remember that our role here is not to entertain the press or the Twitter sphere, as important as they may be, but instead our responsibility is to inspire the people, our constituents, who in the vast majority of cases want us to debate with respect and consideration and in a constructive manner. Too much and too often, particularly at First Minister's questions, this chamber, this shop window to our democracy has fallen short of the public's expectations. We should recognise that and change it. In this new parliament, I sincerely hope that all of us can seize this chance, this fresh start to embrace a more constructive style of political dialogue, which in my experience, the vast majority of people passionately want to see. And I make that plea particularly strongly to the opposition leaders who will set the tone for First Minister's questions. As we debate and inevitably disagree in this chamber, in the months and years ahead. Let us always bear in mind the guiding principles set out at the conception of this parliament, this institution, those of wisdom, justice, compassion, and integrity. And let us reflect those values in the style of our arguments and the choice of our words. Let us work together to take our country forward and our democracy too. Thank you.